Okay, what I have here is a typical setup of what I use for creating pictures for different clients that I've had. Um, I use typically a Bristol Strathmore. It's a 9x12. It comes in, it's a 100 pound. And what that is, is a thicker sheet. It's not your standard computer paper, it's like cardstock. Um, what I use for pencils are typically start off, I use a 2H. It's very light. You get a very light. Uh, I don't put much pressure on the pencil because if I do an outline or something, say I'm just going to do a box type of thing, and it comes out very light. You probably barely see that on the camera, but it's typically how much. It's typically how much uh, the pencil puts out for lead. Um, what I'll go, there's an H as well, but I very seldom use that, but sometimes if I can't find my 2H, I go for the H. And then there's a standard pencil, everybody knows about it, everybody's been in school, HB. Basically that's your middle of the spectrum, for your hard to your soft, because H is the hard and B is the soft. Actually B I think means more clay, or less clay, more graphite more graphite uh, getting into the B. The B is a little bit stronger now. You can see the darker line. Now you can create a stronger, stronger line that way by using the B. You can also start doing cross hatching if you prefer. Because now you're getting you're laying down a stronger line, and that's the uh, B pencil. B's kind of the work for the workhorse uh, of the pencils that I use. Um, next, I would go to the two B. That just gives me for anything on the close. It's a little bit darker. As you can barely see there. And of course there's the 4B. Don't know if you can see that, but I'm hoping you can, which is definitely darker. The line there. And then I gotta sharpen this. I use one of these sharpeners. It has both the um, color and then your standard uh, larger pencil and then your standard uh, pencil size. Sometimes I use the color one for it, but I like these sharpeners better than your than using a um, electric pencil sharpeners because I find that those like meat grinders, they just take a lot of your pencil lead away. And I use my pencils down to almost nothing as you can see. And now this is 6B. Now 6B is going to lay down more graphite. It's a little heavier. And on the on your um, on the camera it's probably not showing up very well. And that brings us that was the 4B. There is one that I use very infrequently. And that is the 8B. And that's probably the heaviest graphite that I use. And actually, to be quite honest, what I use sometimes with the, this one, because it is so dark, it lays down so heavy, you barely have to press on it. I'll give you an example here. Let's just pretend there's a shadow there. On, you'll notice on your other, uh, the uh, what I've noticed on the other pencils is that the HB up to, let's see, probably about 4B, 6B even, will leave a little bit of a shine on it if you press, the more you press. What I found that's with the 8B, 
It's almost like charcoal. It doesn't leave a shine, not like the others. So therefore you don't get that glare back when you shine, like if you see it under light. You ever notice when you press really hard on some pencils, you'll see like a light shining and like you're trying to find out where everything is and you've pressed too long, much on the paper and you get this really, I'll show you what I mean. You get this, uh, let's see, we'll just do a, a circle here and you keep coloring it in, you keep coloring it in, you go harder and harder and harder and harder and harder and harder until you get, and now this is with a B pencil, just, just a, a B. Now it looks pretty dark, but if you take the 8B and you do a similar circle and you do a similar coloring, darkening it all in, I use little circles when I color or uh, fill in on a large space because it just, you'll notice, I don't know if you can notice, oh well, I guess there is a bit of a, a sheen there with the, oh that was a 6, sorry, well even with a 6B there's a sheen, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, there, with the 8, we're going to go, I'm going to show you the difference. And I'm laying it down heavy, like I'm really pressing hard here. Well, I'm not like, you know, trying to force it through the table or anything. I'm just pressing hard here. Now, that was the 8. The 8, I don't know if you can see that, but if you notice, it does, there's no sheen off it, there's no reflection. Okay, that's how much graphite as opposed to clay is in the mix. Because typically what I've read is that they mix clay with graphite to give you the different, um, different LEDs. Eight is pretty robust. Then you get to the 2H you'll notice that there is less in the pencil than there is for here. And that, I believe it has something to do with the strength. Otherwise, if it was a core like this, it would snap because there's less clay in here. It just, uh, you can file it off. You can use um, <clears throat> sandpaper and create your own, um, create your own dust, like graphite dust. That's what I use. I use this for graphite dust. I either use a knife, like I just go like that. And as you can see, there's flex on there. And then I would just use a brush or I'd use a blender. And then I would just use that to, to blend in. A six, I think it is. And this one is an eight. Yeah. Obviously this is clean, it has never been used. And those are the different pencils I use. Now sometimes if I want to create, um, you know, whiskers on a cat or whatever, what I'll do is I'll use this. And then what I'll do is uh, outline the image first. And I'll just take a circle, a couple of ears. I'm just doing this quick. And, uh, and I map out the image first. Then I'll come in. This, uh, what I did was I, you can use an, um, a dull nail. But what I use is this, and I just create whiskers. I do, uh, I just etch it in, into the paper. And what you do is then, depending upon the shading, like if this is a light shading area, around, so you're doing a little bit of a circle there, so it's a little bit darker, a little bit darker in there. Light's coming from this source by the way. That's a 2H pencil. I'm going to go to uh, 4B and what you'll see, I don't know if you'll see it or notice it, but there is, you can see the lines showing up through the paper. Now if I wanted to go with a darker background and then you can see how it pops right out off the page there.
And that's what I use that etching tool. I, I made my own etching tool. I suppose you could, you can find, <laughs> you can find an awl, you can find a, just take a nail, file it down like a dullet. Um, you can use a pin if you want to get even uh, finer lines. Make sure it's dull, otherwise you're just going to be scratching the paper. But basically that's the equipment I use. This, this is my uh, battery operated eraser. Basically all, all it is is one of these, one of these but with a motor on it. Instead of stroking back and forth, it spins, and then you can get rid of any material that you want that way. This is an eraser shield, and this you can use to get into some spots that you just want to get rid of the line. You kind of match it up with that. There's a line in there, and I'm just going to go in and erase that. And you don't affect the rest of your paper so you're not it's like masking off an area and then you can erase so you're not damaging the rest of it these are the same as as these are the same as this only smaller to get into tighter areas um also the um different erasers that we have here are this is a kneaded eraser you can stretch it out and that's what I use a lot of times if I overshade it in an area, I press on and then I can just take it off and just eliminate layer by layer any extra that I've created on. It shows up on your eraser to clean it, you just stretch it out. And there you are. You can also form it into a if you want to get into a tight spot and just erase a little bit, it does very well with that. It doesn't leave anything behind. It doesn't leave any eraser shavings like you would get typically off of this one, this one, or this. These are all vinyl erasers. This is comes in a package like this. It's latex free. And that's basically it, what I use. And then I have my picture set up over here. Sometimes I use my phone on the side here and I can blow up the picture and get the detail. Other times I do a printout of the picture. If somebody sends it to me via email, I can pop it in there. And I just print it off, put it over here so I can get, instead of trying to see it on my big screen. But that's basically it. There's not very much to it. Um, just some basic ideas here for the different shading and stuff and uh, yeah I'm gonna do a few of these and I hope that helps you if, uh, if that's what uh, if you're interested in this at all and if you'd like to see more if you got any ideas or what you want me to you you would like to see me do by all means go ahead um, send me a comment in the comment section like subscribe and I'll see you later you have a great day Bye-bye now.